I'm standing at the very location where Jesus, I believe, went up the mountain. Right after he fed the people, he came up the mountain and he sent the disciples away to go to Bethsaida. He sent the people away and then he came up the mountain and here he prayed. It's a picture of our Lord. Right now, where is he? He's in the kingdom of God. He is in heaven. He's in the mountain where he's interceding for us. I'm now at the very top of Mount Arbel, where I believe Jesus would frequent in times of aloneness with the Father, times of seeking the Father, hearing His wisdom, His voice. I believe that this is the place that He will come to. Even after the feeding of the 5,000, the, the Word of God says Jesus came up to the high mountain and from here, he saw the disciples whom he sent away after the feeding of the 5,000. He sent them away to go to the city of Bethsaida and he saw them from here. As you can see, I love coming here because, you know, you, from here you can see three fourths of Jesus' ministry in Galilee. His ministry of preaching, teaching, and healing took place in this vicinity. And right at the end, where this parallel banks meet, just to the right is Capernaum, where Jesus would frequent, and it's known as the town of Jesus even today. And it's a place called, in Hebrew, Kafir Nahum, the town of comfort, because Comforter is the name of the Messiah, and He has come. So, as we look at this beautiful place here, in Mount Arbel, drinking the sights, knowing that our Lord was here and spending time with the Father. Let us see all the truths that He wants us to receive, especially the now word for His people at this time. Let's turn to the Word of God in regards to the feeding of the 5,000, which many of you are familiar with. I believe the location for the feeding of the 5,000 took place just on the other side of Mount Arabel, all the way down the slopes. And today you can see a vast field of barley. It's a time nearly for the barley harvest. But I believe that back then it was deserted. And this whole place here was deserted, except for Migdal, down the hill, down the mountain here. And then Tiberius was around. But besides that, there's no other city. Today is busy, it's bustling. But I believe that this area here was a deserted place. And the Bible says that Jesus saw there were so many people and they were pressing in to hear His word. And the day wore off and now they were hungry. Isn't it amazing that the one that took note of their hunger wasn't the disciples, it was the Lord Himself. He knows when you are hungry. He knows that that hunger is for more than just um, materialism or hedonistic pursuits or entertainment to fill up that void, that hunger, because there's a hunger in your heart that is too large. Your heart is just too large for all these small things to fill. Only the Lord Jesus can fill your heart. He's large enough. In fact, He's too large for your heart. Just like in the, in the Song of Songs, the Bible says that the Beloved in that song loves all of us and our Beloved is our Lord Jesus, but we are the Beloved also in that Song of Songs. But Ecclesiastes talk about vanity of vanities. This world is just empty. Every pursuit, every pursuit for pleasure, entertainment, uh, our our riches and wealth, fame and fortune just comes up empty. Why? Because Ecclesiastes is all about life under the sun and it's vanity. Everything is just empty because your heart is too big for the things of the world to satisfy. But the next book, Song of Songs, our Lord Jesus, we found the object above the sun, an object fit for our heart's pleasure and delight. Even though he, now we find He's too large 
for our small hearts. But we found the fulfillment in Him. And He was here in Mount Arabel, seeing the needs of the people down there in the slopes in that area. Now, some might say that the feeding of the 5,000 took place in Bethsaida, in Luke chapter 9, the account of the feeding of the 5,000. But actually, if you read carefully, it says, it was a desert place in a place belonging to Bethsaida. It doesn't say it is over at Bethsaida, right in the north of the, um, the Lake of Galilee, over yonder, but it was a place belonging to the city of Bethsaida. So there are towns that have properties and areas and fields that belong to them, even though they are many miles away. So I believe that that answers to the place here, because after the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus went up the mountain. So let's go with account here in the Word of God, because I believe God has a word for you. And, and the Bible says that Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming towards him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that this may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread. 200 denarii worth of bread is 200, 200 days wages. 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them that everyone may have a little. Now think about that. That everyone may have a little. So in the mentality of uh, Philip, it is even 200 days wage of bread will not supply these people here. 5,000 men, but including women and children, probably 15,000. So he's saying that each one can only receive a little. So he's thinking of the vastness of the need. Perhaps you're going through something right now. Maybe there's a challenge in your marriage or you receive a bad medical report from the doctor and you find that the need in your life is overwhelming. You don't, you, you, you can't see the supply. You can't see the, the resources that you need because you are captured by the vastness of the need. So that's Philip's perspective. And the Lord was there all the time. And then Andrew, another disciple, he said to Jesus, there is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? So now he's saying, look at this boy. You know, he probably wanted to humor the boy by bringing the boy to Jesus. He says he has five loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? So now Andrew's perspective, and perhaps is what some of us see as well. He sees the smallness, the littleness of the supply. Five loaves, two fish. Look at the vastness of the need. What are they among so many? Perhaps you are overwhelmed by the littleness of your resources. You say that I don't have much education. I, I didn't really finish high school even. Or, you know, I don't have the kind of strength or the help that I need. I'm overwhelmed by the meagerness, by the littleness of the supply. Or perhaps you find that you're challenged in the area of finance and um, the supply has been, has been little, as far as you are concerned, to meet the vastness of the need in your life. Well, my friend, the answer is here. The very first thing Jesus said, make the people sit down. So sitting down, yeshaf in Hebrew, is always the first thing you do before a miracle happens. In fact, he organized them in groups of 50s and all throughout the place. He made them sit down in a group of 50s and five is a number of grace. He organized, so there's, there's also organization before the miracle. They are not antithesis to each other. You can organize and still expect God's anointing. Some people think the anointing comes without any planning and all that. So you can still plan, but make sure it's wise planning. So the very first thing is they sit down, just like Psalms 91, before all the blessings come. No evil shall befall you. No plague will come near your dwelling. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the destruction that lays waste at noonday. My friend, all this happens because of the first verse, he who dwells in the secret place. And in the Hebrew, he who sits down, yashaf, he who sits down. So the very first thing Jesus said, make the people sit down. But, you know, 
you might feel like, sit down, I, I, I can't rest because of the greatness, the vastness of my need. I, I can't rest because when I look at what I have, uh, I look at myself, I have very little. I have not much to supply the need in my life. Well, the first thing, you have to trust the ways of the Lord. He wants you to rest. Rest from your cares, worries, and concerns. And then the Bible says the next thing, there was much grass in the place. So the man sat down in number about 5,000 and Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down. And likewise of the fish, as much as they wanted. Now in Luke's account of this feeding of the multitude, you find Jesus giving thanks and then he broke it and gave. The word gave there in the Greek is in the imperfect tense, which means he kept giving, he kept supplying. And the disciples keep coming back. They, they, they would take some loaves and fish and they would go to the people and give it to them. And then he'll, they'll come back for more. 12 disciples coming to Jesus for more. And he just kept on giving. As long as there was a need, the supply never ran out. And this is beautiful, friend, because the Bible says, likewise of the fish as much, as much as they wanted, not according to God's will, and God says enough, according to God's, uh, um, you know, law that says only such an amount can be supplied. No, as much as they wanted. They limited the supply the moment they say, we are full. The Bible says, when they were filled, Jesus told the disciples, pick up the fragments that remain. You know what? There were 12 baskets full left over. One for each disciple. They were serving the Lord. If you are serving the Lord, let me tell you this, your supply is vast. Your supply is great. Amen. More than you can eat. But it was after they were filled. Notice, as long as they were hungry, they kept on eating as much as they wanted. Amen. Many a times we limit the Holy One of Israel. We limit the Lord. His supply is greater than our need. You need to see that. Where sin increase? And sometimes we are so overwhelmed by the sin in, in this young generation and we are saying, man, they, you know, they, they experience things we don't experience in our age and all that. But my friend, where sin increase? Grace! super abounds. I'm standing at the very location where Jesus, I believe, went up the mountain. Right after he fed the people, he came up the mountain and he sent the disciples away to go to Bethsaida. He sent the people away and then he came up the mountain and here he prayed. It's a picture of our Lord. Right now, where is he? He's in the kingdom of God. He is in heaven. He's in the mountain where he's interceding for us. And he was praying here. And if you look behind me, you'll find that the Lake of Galilee here and Capernaum right at the end where I'm pointing, right? So he sent his disciples down. There is a trail that I used to take with my pastors down this trail. It's an ancient trail. I believe that's a trail that Jesus took. When he saw them rowing and in the fourth watch of the night, the Bible tells us, there's the darkest time from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. It's always darkest before dawn. That's the darkest period. Jesus looked at them and they were rowing against the wind. There was a strong wind that came, came in and pushed them back. And it's like a picture of our Lord today at the Father's right hand. And He's looking at the church. Friend, He's looking at you. He's looking at the, the, the body of Christ. In spite of what is happening in the world, we are in the world, but not of the world. Our resources don't have an expiry date. Our resources are inexhaustible because they are found in Him. So look to Him alone. And He saw them struggling against the wind. It's like, you know, taking three steps forward, then two steps backward. And the Bible says, in the darkest time, Jesus came down the mountain walk on the water and went towards the disciple. And they were afraid they because it was dark, it was stormy, just imagine that. And this I experienced fisherman, but it was the darkest time. 
in the darkest time of your life, look out for Jesus. You may not see Him the way you, you expect, but He is there. He will always come to you. You see, grace is about Him coming to us, not about men trying to reach Him. On Mount Sinai, man trying with his efforts, man by his law keeping, man by his good intentions. No, Jesus came down the mountain. Amen. When Moses came down the mountain with the law, the people fled. But when Jesus came down the mountain, the Mount of Transfiguration, he came down the mountain, the people ran towards him. There's something about grace, something about Lord Jesus that attracts us, that the law cannot. Hey, I'm Mati Shoshani, and thank you for watching the TBN Israel YouTube channel. We hope this video gave you greater understanding of Israel and her people. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to share what you've learned and ask your questions and comments below. And invite your friends to join the conversation.